how to ace the data modeling interview round to get into a data engineering role. By the end of this video, you're going to have a massive advantage because I don't think I see a lot of people talking about how the data modeling interview is structured, how it goes, what the grading criteria is, and how you can actually prep for it in a very smart way. So let's jump into it. I'm going to give you what I call my frameworks so that you can learn and use these frameworks to study. And then by the time you actually approach your real interview, you can keep these frameworks in mind so that you know you're actually going to approach the problem correctly. So what do I mean by frameworks? So by frameworks, I mean, this is how you should think about approaching a question. The wrong way to do it is if you memorize a data modeling question, and then you go and try to reiterate it on the interview. The problem is you're never going to memorize a thousand data modeling questions. It's just not going to happen. So what you want to do is you want to learn how to approach the actual question. Now, before I jump into the frameworks, let me quickly give you the problem statement. The problem statement can be something such as, hey, you work at DoorDash, right? Increase engagement at DoorDash, right? And so when we say increase engagement at DoorDash, right, we can say, hey, if we want to increase engagement, you know, create a table, create the fact tables, the dim tables, et cetera. For the purpose of this video, I'm not going to go over what fact tables and dim tables are, but what I want you guys to start getting in the mindset of is what is the right way to approach a question that is very ambiguous like this? So the first thing you have to remember is it's ambiguous on purpose. So step number one is actually ask a ton of questions. So for example, and by the way, when I say ask a ton of questions, I literally mean 10 plus. 99% of clients we work with, 99% of people I talk to, they think a lot of questions means two or three. I tend to go to 20. For this purpose, start with 10. So when I say increase engagement, I'm immediately asking questions like, what is engagement, right? What's engagement uh, in what time frame? What part of the app? Is it only in the US? Are we talking about mobile versus uh, you know, uh, desktop? Are we talking about Android versus iOS, right? Is it the holidays? Did we see a big dip in conversion? Did we see a lot of people start, right? Do you see how I just rattled off 10 questions? That is a skill. And again, I'm telling you this from experience. We've helped a thousand people at Data Engineer Academy, more than a thousand. This is the hardest part for people to grasp because their brain isn't accustomed to answering or asking these types of questions. And mind you, most of these were business questions. So I'm actually going to cheat a little bit right here. And I'm going to say, hey, if this was framework number one, here's framework, what I call framework number zero. And framework number zero is dog food. So what does dog food mean? In business, dog food means you eat your own product. So in this case, what I would do if I had an interview, interview coming up with DoorDash in seven days, I'm using the product, the app, right? Literally 10 times in the previous 10 days, right? So use the app, use the product. Now, not every product is consumer facing. I get it, but you might have to use a proxy or you might have to do research online to see, okay, this is you know what the uh, user would experience. Because if I'm using DoorDash, and I'm going through the app and touching every button and kind of starting to visualize, oh, this is the data that's being collected here. That's the data that's getting moved there. What I'm doing there is I am dog fooding. I'm using the product to understand what questions come to mind. By the way, here's a good one for you. If you don't use DoorDash, open up your Spotify, right? Like if I ask you, hey, increase Spotify engagement right now, what does that mean? Because you might think, hey, it's listen to more songs. Maybe it's listening to it longer. Maybe it's opening up the app in the first place. Maybe it's creating a playlist, right? So do you see how engagement in that case has 10 different meanings? But you're not going to know what questions to ask, step number one, framework number one, if you aren't familiar with the product. And so before I go on to the other two frameworks, right, here is, and again, remember, the goal is to create tables, right? That, that's what they're going to ask you to do. Hey, create a data model, create tables based on that question. Now, here is the number one mistake I see people make. The number one mistake is 
and again, going with framework number one, they just start, right? They just start answering. And this is problematic for a lot of reasons. Because let's say the interview is 30 minutes. The interviewer will very much on purpose not cut you off. And so if they see that you start answering the question, they're just going to let you ramble for 30 minutes. But if this is the right answer, right? And you're going like this and you start going off the wrong path, they're going to let you. And guess what happens at that point? You just wasted 30 minutes of the interview. So what is the right way to approach it? It is to drastically focus on the first framework. Ask 10 questions, get a clarification as to what they're asking, and that way you can focus the rest of the time. If you ask questions for five to 10 minutes, you can focus 20 minutes on creating the tables. Now, number two, framework number two, is what I call a three word step, which is what's the goal. So after you've asked questions, your job is to determine specifically what is the goal that they're asking. We already know they want to increase engagement. We already know that. After you ask questions, you have clarity as to what the goal is. And maybe the clarity is, hey, they want more people to, to um, you know, search more restaurants, right? So not necessarily buy, by the way, just search more restaurants. Well, now, if we know that that's the goal, the second part of this, the second three word part here is define the metric, right? And the, and the reason I say this is because people have such a hard time quantifying something and getting very clear as to what the goal is. If you work for a company right now, maybe you have objectives, maybe you have key results, maybe you have you know, goals that your team set for you for that quarter, for that year, whatever. Notice that there's always a number attached to it. It's going from X. To why? That's what we want to do here. Maybe it's saying, hey, you know, instead of searching, you know, every user per day searches two restaurants per day, we want to increase that to four. So maybe we come out with some ML algos that increase the number of recommendations and make it more personalized. Maybe they know based on what neighborhood I'm in, I should be looking at that restaurant, this restaurant, that restaurant. Maybe they see I order a bunch of sushi and I want to, you know, recommend this person more sushi restaurants, whatever the case is. Right. But once we have that, then then the final step is to actually create the tables. Right. Create the tables, create the fact tables, the dim tables and say, hey, based on what I know the metrics are, based on the questions above here, what are the right tables to actually create? And that's when you create your fact tables, your dim tables. Right. And you create your primary keys and you attach the tables to one another, et cetera. That part's pretty easy. I'll add an extra bonus here, an extra bonus framework. And that is tie back to the question. Okay. So tie back the tables that you just created to the question for the end of the data modeling ground. Why is this important? Because a lot of times people will start creating tables because they're just used to those tables from previous work experiences, but then they realize they don't actually answer the question. Or even worse, they might create questions that answer, oh, I know that DoorDash wants to sell more food. So let me create tables to sell more food. But think about it. We just spent this entire video saying how important it is to ask questions and to define the metric, because the metric in this situation is that you have to increase the number of restaurants that a user is looking at per day. So if your tables, and again, this is why I'm calling this the bonus round, if your tables from this framework, number three, doesn't answer that metric in that question, they will deduct points. Remember, and I'm going to leave you with this, they are making this question right here, right? They're making the question. Um, where is it? Increase engagement. They're making that question ambiguous on purpose. They want to see how you think. They want to see how analytical you are. They want to see what kind of questions you ask. So if I have to leave you with one final thing, this right here, 
going to circle it in pink, is the most important thing you can do heading into the data modeling mock interview. Get ready to ask a bunch of questions, flex that muscle, and get ready to go. So if you want to see more rounds like this, more questions like this, do me a favor, subscribe, like, share the usual, you know, whatever it said, and click on the link below, book a call with me or my team. We're going to see if you're a good fit for our one-on-one -on -one personalized training program to see if we can give you advice just like we did today on the data modeling stuff, stuff that you really can't learn in a textbook. You really do have to have somebody else teach you and guide you the way, or even if it's through videos, just like the ones you watch, because again, you have to train your muscle, just like we talked about in framework number, um, I think it was number one, asking questions is a muscle. And so if you are interested in getting help, totally cool. If you're not, we have a bunch of resources on the website, click on the link below, book a call, and we'll see you on the other side.